Hello, welcome to my uh, 23rd day of, of teaching this class. Um, I put up there Paul, that, that, that's, this is relating to what I taught before, that's the other word for dog. I, I, didn't, I thought maybe I should show you how it's spelled, the catch. Uh, well, when you jack up a car, if you've ever used a bumper jack, when you push it down, you lift it and then it clicks, well that's the Paul or the dog catching. Well that had to do with the history of technology. But today I want to move on to a different subject. This is still uh, the, pre, uh, the 18th section of your notes, 18.2 is, I, I'm guessing, what page you'd be on by now when you have to add paper, 18.3, 18.4, you just keep adding paper. Well, uh, there was a point in the history of humanity that all over the world, or at least in many places in the world, people began to move very, very big stones. And I don't have a real good answer of why they did it. Uh, part of me wants to say, because it's fun. I, I don't know. Uh, but uh, megalithic is the word for this. Uh, mega meaning big, large. These come from two Greek words from the Greek. Later on, I'll, I, I don't want to stop now to deal with this abbreviation, but GK is going to be Greek. Capital G would be German. Large plus lithos stone, large stone construction. Uh, I'm not talking about the pyramids. The pyramids were built, the Egyptian pyramids were built out of very large stones, maybe two tons each. The thing about them is there's so many of them, uh, one or two million of them per pyramid. That's not really what I mean. Those are big stones. But what I'm talking about is most famously Stonehenge. Uh, Stonehenge... I can usually count on my students to have in their minds an image of Stonehenge. They, they sometimes want to say hedge instead of henge. Uh, they probably know that. Uh, and uh, where the, they have those huge stones standing and then a, a, a stone lintel across the top. Uh, then there's Easter Island. Uh, the kids aren't quite so likely to uh, know about Easter Island, but if I say, if I say those big stones staring out to the sea, uh, um, they can often bring them to mind. And then Machu Picchu, that's the one that I really love to talk about in Peru. This is what I mean. And, and the way I, I go at this uh, is I use, uh, or I have used when I was teaching in public school, I used uh, clips from uh, uh, a Nova uh, ep uh, series called Secrets of Lost Empires. If you can find that online, it's there. I, I looked, I could not find an easy way for you to just watch it instantly for free. I don't know. Uh, it seems to me it should be there somehow. Uh, Nova, it, they, they do wonderful work. But in any case, uh, I, I'll start with the one about Stonehenge where it shows some engineers have got a hundred or so volunteers trying to drag a stone that weighs, I think, 40 tons, to, and they argue about, well, how did they do this in England? Because they brought those stones from some 20 miles away. How, how did they do that? And they see if they can duplicate it. Uh, uh, I, uh, I like to show the part where <clears throat> a guy goes in into a swamp and, and shows how he rots up uh, uh, the bark of a... Uh, Oh, uh, a lime tree, I think it is. It's a tree we don't have here. And, and twist it to make the rope. So how could they have rope? And, and they try to figure out how in the world did they do that? Well, they use a, a concrete block as their megalith to move. And, and they get it moved. Uh, Easter Island is covered in this as well. I usually don't have the time to deal with that. And, but then Machu Picchu, I go to another episode. And and this one, I get genuinely excited about what I see of Machu Picchu, of that series, because I've been there. I, I slept overnight in the ruins of Machu Picchu. This would have been, I think, in 19, yes, 1969, because it was the same summer that, that, that Americans landed on the moon. Uh, I, I went to Machu Picchu, and I, I, I walked all over that place and uh, slept in the ruins. Uh, it was not crowded at that time. Uh, there, there's so much I could tell you about that, but it, I, I, I think that Machu Picchu probably at that time, and I think I would still stand by it, that it is arguably the most beautiful spot on earth. 
uh, I climbed to uh, the top of a mountain. Machu Picchu sits in a, in a saddle. And there's Pichu Pichu, I think is the name of the mountain right beside it. I climbed up to that and was on the top of it and, and a thousand feet or more, a couple thousand feet below, you can see the Urubamba River going around it. And then way up surrounding, you could see snow-capped mountains. Uh, it, it was just unbelievable. So I can personally relate to Machu Picchu. But beyond that, how the Incas did that, they don't know. They still really don't know. I think the, I think, it, well, not maybe not in Machu Picchu, another place, a fortress near uh, Cusco, I think they moved stones that might have weighed 100 tons. How did they do it? They didn't have uh, writing. This is prehistoric. They didn't have the wheel. They didn't have horses, beasts of burden, not really, llamas. And, uh, you know, how did they do it? And, and, they're, and they're fit together perfectly. That's so famous, the famous Inca fit, they call it. They fit so perfectly. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, as of now, in the year 2011, nobody really, really knows how the Incas did that. So I get pretty excited about Machu Picchu, and uh, I hope it goes on. While I'm there with that video, I also show the kids the section of that video where they build a rope bridge. Uh, they build an entire bridge really out of nothing but grass. Uh, and they, and it, it fits with fiber use. They, they twist the grass, they twist it into twine and string and rope and cable. And, uh, well, they do end up putting woven mats on top of it. Uh, but, uh, you know, in this venue, I, I, I just don't have a good way to, to be showing this to you. But you're sitting at a computer if you're watching this, and uh, it can be found. Uh, uh, and, I, and I hope you find it. I mean, again and again, I keep saying that if you're watching these videos, great, I'm, I'm flattered. But so much of the action is in, uh, in these clips that I, I don't yet have an easy way to show you. Okay, megalithic stone construction. Uh, I guess one other thing, because I think I have time to say, I think that the biggest example of a stone, single stone, a single stone ever moved, I think was in Greece. And there's a video about that too. How in the world did they move that stone? I think now we're talking 200 tons or more. Uh, it, it's a neat subject, and uh, and I, uh, you know, I don't want to beat it to death, so I'll leave it now because I've got other things to tell you today that I get excited about. So. Uh,